Hey, um, gonna review uh, Tim Burton's 1989 Batman. Now, uh, this is a very difficult one for me to review because there's a ton of bias from me. This came out in 1989, and uh, it was a really, really big year. I was 11 years old when it came out. And uh, this is, hands down, the movie that made me into a nerd. Before this movie came out, I saw... I read Killing Joke, I read Arkham Asylum, and I read Dark Knight Returns. So I really, really felt like I was a big, 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 big Batman nerd when, when the movie came out. And the movie was big. Really, really big. I mean, I, I read the novelization before the movie came out. I uh, talked to a lot of friends. I was still very, very frightened to see the movie. I was, I had these high expectations, and uh, well, it kind of superseded everyone because before I even went to see it, I had a whole lot of friends who saw it beforehand. Uh, everyone was praising it. It was huge. It was huge on the release. I mean, this was. A lot of people are going to say this is the big um, summer movie, although I would say a lot of the movies during the 80s were the summer movies. A lot of the movies. I think Jaws was really the first summer movie, the the very, very first one. But this was, uh, this was really, really special and very, very important to a lot of people. I remember uh, going to see Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and the lines were still packed on Batman. I eventually saw it after seeing Honey, I Shrunk the Kids when I came back from New Jersey, living in upstate New York. Um, um, well, basically, uh, it was huge. I eventually got to see it after so much pressure from my friends, um, especially one friend who is this uh, huge religious kid. He even got to see it. I was nervous. I was overwhelmed by it. I mean, the ad campaigns back then were just aggressive. They were... You couldn't avoid it. You could not avoid it. I wore a shirt that had Batman, the bat symbol on the chest, and the Batman jumping forward with his hands kind of like this. It looked really, really badass. The plot is uh, basically uh, an origin story for the Joker. Uh, Jack Napier, a uh, mob member who uh, eventually gets thrown into a vat of uh, chemicals and then gets bleached and becomes the Joker. Batman uh, takes him down. Simple as that. It's not that much. It's just a big vigilante, uh, two characters fighting off one another. Does it still hold up? That's something that a lot of people have argued about throughout the years. Some people says it's kind of old. Um, but I think Tim Burton uh, adds a element of camp to it. He, um, if, if about this, about the time this was released, he just finished Beetlejuice, and uh, he wasn't that much of a big name as much as he would be when uh, Batman Returns came out. Then he was a bigger name. Um, but on the time it was released, it was this level of kind of what was feeding off whatever the 80s was going with. And then it kind of went askewed. I mean, that's the best element of it. Like, when it starts, it starts like this kind of bad 80s movie. But then it just kind of twists it on its head with the Joker kind of becoming this surreal character. And Batman also becoming a surreal character. Um, it, it, does it hold up? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. It does hold up very, very well. It's this kind of weird, noir horror. Which is something that... I, I don't know if there is really a term. I think a lot of people are going to argue if it's film noir and horror, but... I don't know, I, I think it, it is. It's this crime theme to it that... that, that still remains timeless, that eventually... Uh, the Bruce Tim series will eventually adopt, and, and they push it even further. Tim Burton's movie, uh, 
this movie um, is different from Batman Returns, and this one's very, very different from uh, the other ones later on. It's this weird kind of like uh, horror movie. I think one of the best scenes is the Joker's transformation sequence when he's in the hospital, and he goes mirror, and, and th that that scene is priceless. It's it's probably Tim Burton's best work ever. Um, does it still hold up? Um, it's tough. I, I don't know. It's kind of a it's subjective, but I think it holds up. I think it's this weird kind of like kind of this hyperbole take of the 80s, but then kind of switched on its head. I mean, the whole Prince uh, music themes kind of come even more cartoony when Joker becomes this kind of larger-than-life character. And uh, it's good. It's really, really good. It holds up really, really well. I think one of the best elements is Michael Keaton's performances. I know a lot of people are not going to say Michael Keaton's our favorite Batman, but you know what? He's really good. He's uh, this kind of weird uh, Patrick Bateman 80s yuppie kind of surreal character who just doesn't see the real world. And his best scene is when he's talking to Vicki Vale and he's trying to explain to her about himself. And it's almost this comical aspect. And this is, at the time it was released, it was like a joke. Michael Keaton as Batman. And he plays it for laughs and he plays it as this weird kind of like I can't accept reality so I I try to like accept it and he's forced into this situation where he's trying to explain to Vicky Vale uh, who is he, what does he do and it's a really brilliant scene because he doesn't know what a normal family does he uh, tries to explain the mother and the father and it's comical because he he doesn't know it. Um, it's good. It's it's really really great. I mean, as a, uh, I mean, the worst element is that um, he becomes this kind of cheap, dirty, hairy kind of clone, and it's not that good. It's well, it's good for back then, and sometimes even now, some people like to think of Batman as this dirty, hairy like character. So, I guess for that factor, uh, I guess it works. Um, Jack Nicholson steals the whole movie. I remember, uh, I, I often question why Jack Nicholson had the leading name on the title. Like I said, uh, this made me into a nerd, and um, I analyzed everything about it. It's like, I came in reading all these comics, and when I saw the movie, it just didn't seem like the comics. It seemed like its own thing. And because of everyone's enthusiasm, because of what was going on in the time, I kind of let the criticisms step aside. And uh, I let enjoyed it. And it was a really, really good ride for what it was. Jack Nicholson does steal this old show. He is this character. He isn't Joker, he's kind of himself on massive amount of makeup and over the topness. Um is it the best Joker? Um Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a really, really good Joker. Um and what I mean is like early on in the movie it seems like Jack Nicholson's Jack Nicholson. And he uh he's kind of just amping himself up uh, upon each scene. It's brilliant. It's really smart. It's really, really smart take on him. Um, now again, uh, Tim Burton is uh, criticized by a lot of uh, fanboys, Batman fanboys, film fanboys. Is This is one of his earliest films. He just finished Beetlejuice. And uh, he adds a, a nice element of this kind of like his love of B-movies. And uh, the best element is uh, in casting Jack Palance as uh, one of the crime bosses. And Jack Palance is the right amount of terrible. He, before this movie, he was, he was doing nothing but B-movies. He was always 
casted as a villain in the movie. And here he just plays it over the top just enough that it, it, it it's the reason why Tim Burton is uh, is who he is. He, he lets things play out for what they are. If you've listened to his commentary tracks, he, he kind of doesn't take his job too seriously. He kind of appeals to whatever the producers want. And he kind of tries to add his own sensibilities. So he kind of wanted this kind of somewhat crime story, but at the same time he wanted a B-movie. And he still entertains. I mean, this is... I would say Sleepy Hollow is his better action... Well, it's comical, but it's still adds that level of action it's better in that than in this one but I think like Tim Burton does a spectacular job adding a lot of his own the right amount of just he doesn't he doesn't seem to like want to overwhelm with the effects he wants to add enough imperfections that just makes it its own personality to me personally this is the movie that that made me want to be a film director I eventually became an artist, but it was a big, big influence on me. Uh, Prince. <sighs> Can I not talk about Prince? I mean, I bought the Batman album. It's not good. Um, <laughs> this was 89. I actually bought the album on vinyl. And, um, you know what? It's weird, Prince. It's working on sample and dance tracks and at the time it was it represents its time and it's weird because uh, Joker is this weird kind of like party persona just amped up and uh, Prince kind of becomes its own character with it it's um, not the best uh, Batman score it's well Tim, uh, Danny Elfman's uh, score is hands down the best thing out of the movie and Prince seems to kind of ruin it and ruin its timelessness I think uh, I think adding Prince was a little bit too much he, even though he, he helps probably it's Jack Nelson's choice because that's what he likes to party to and that adds to uh, Jack Nicholson it's weird because he was dating Kim Basinger and uh, she tries to act in this movie and she doesn't do a good job. She was dating Prince and she was dating the producer at the time. Which again, makes her this kind of shallow, empty character. Kind of like walks through the set of the movie and it's not that good that is the weakest link of the movie. The movie has an amazing art direction. I mean, I, I can't, I, I don't know, I think that's Tim Burton's sensibility, it's the production designers, they have like this amazing back catalog of like classic horror elements that they wanted to emphasize, and I think Sleepy Hollow is a better film than uh, this movie as far as like Tim Burton's repertoire. Batman Returns is a better movie. The animated series is better than this movie. So what I'm trying to say is like, where would I rank this with other Tim, uh, with other Batman movies? Um, kind of in the middle. It's it's a revolution. I'm not gonna deny that, but it's not my favorite one. It's uh, it's definitely a dramatic change in just where Batman was placed in pop culture. The thing is, before this was 30 years before the, uh, sorry, 20 years before the uh, Adam West series, 25 years. And uh, a lot of people were still stuck in thinking of Adam West, except the comic book fans like me. And uh, it made me into a big comic book nerd. It made me into a big movie nerd really really big nerd I came in thinking that's not exactly how the Joker um, his origin story worked but 
I still enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed the movie a lot. So, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, I rank it pretty high. I, uh, I think it's really, really great. I know I've had arguments throughout the decades about it, and, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's got its own personality. It's this weird, like, crime noir horror thing that um, Jack Nicholson seems to chew the scenery and just dance around and just have so much persona with it. I I would rank it in my, like, you know, I'm going to rank it in really high. It's right in there. It's right in there, that, that top five. Uh, favorite Batman movies. If I feel like I'm taking a bullet when I say that, but like I think like it. The reason why I'm saying this is because uh, it adds the right elements of the '80s Batman: Dark Knight, Arkham Asylum, and Killing Joke. It adds a lot of those elements. It adds a lot of them. I mean, you can tell uh, right off the bat, like when Batman's just holding up thugs and just telling them to continue saying his name because he just wants to spread fear on Gotham. That's an element from the 80s. And uh, I feel that's, that's why it's good. It adds this kind of like, he goes down into the shit and he... He really makes his point. Oh well. I'm just gonna say I, I'm a fanboy, and uh, this is the movie that made me into a fanboy. Oh well. Oh, peace out, man.